It is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by the head coach of the College of Idaho men's basketball team, Coach Colby Blaine, who is coming off a national championship, the NAI men's basketball tournament champions for 2023. Coach, first, congratulations on the win for you and for the program, a 73-71 victory over Indiana Tech. And there were times this season that, uh, and especially through the tournament, you guys just looked invincible but uh, then came down to the wire in the championship game. Congrats on the win and take us through that championship. Well, I appreciate you having me on. It's been a blast getting to talk to everybody and kind of tell everybody about our story over the last couple of days. But uh, what a tournament, um, you know, fun experience for us. Uh, last year, 2022, we had gotten knocked out in the Elite Eight. We were up five with two minutes to go. And uh, we, lost, we ended up losing to Loyola, the national champions, eventual national champions. And so that really resonated with us all year that we needed to be prepared for every moment, mentally, physically, strategically. And I think you saw that in our tournament this year. You know, we were this team was able to get big leads in every game that we played in this year. And so part of dealing with big leads is, is the, you know, the momentum changes at times and people are going to come back and you kind of got to hold on at times. And so. You know, we had we we were ready for those moments in our final four in our, our championship game, um, and it showed with us being able to finish. But uh, but man, those were some good games. I don't even know what happened yet. I still have to watch those games. I still don't know how it finished. Um, but uh, I'm really proud of our guys and in our college, and it's fun. It's been fun to enjoy this experience. Well, I'm glad for you when you're watching that that you do know how it ends up. So that that yeah. takes a little bit of the stress off off of watching that in in the replay there. But coach, talk to me about then. You were talking about the momentum shifts in that, and it was the second straight game with the semifinal and the championship in which you all scored 73, and then had to hold off a furious comeback from very much quality teams. What do you say then to your teams at that point? You talked about them being prepared. Is there anything in the huddle that uh, you 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 know mention and say, okay, guys, this is what we've worked for? Yeah, no, absolutely. We, we you want to prepare yourself for those moments, and so we try to replicate those moments in practice. And you know, in our previous games, there was many times this year at halftime that we were up ten to twenty points. And one thing that I know that I've learned in my career is that I really believe you got to fight fire with fire. And so we know what's going to happen in the second half. Teams are going to start to play a little looser. They're going to take quicker shots. They're going to take more dangerous shots. And you know, if you look at our schedule. Some teams did that and it didn't go their way. And so we were able to extend our lead. Well, when you're playing in the final four in the national championship, you're playing two incredibly good programs who did make their shots and they did execute. Um, and so, you know, at halftime of both those games, we reminded our guys, look, we got to keep pushing. We got to find open layups. You got to shoot with confidence and we'll get to the end of the game and figure out how we need to finish it. But you know, Ottawa had a good strategy. They started fouling us really early in the final four game, and, and we missed our free throws. Had we made our free throws, that game would have finished a lot faster. Mm -hmm. uh, but kudos to them for coming up with a good strategy. And then that Indiana Tech game, you know, they just made some big shots down the stretch, and, and we didn't uh, finish our shots in the half court. But, you know, in those huddles and in those timeouts, we were going back to everything we had planned for. We were using, you know, the mottos of toughness and next play and you know it, all we need is one point i mean we just kept saying that over and over and over again and and the guys were confident enough to make the plays down the stretch we had a, a strong roster that you worked with all season long again a fantastic run extending onto and culminating in a championship the tournament most valuable player charles elsey had 67 points just in Kansas City alone I, I know that was a great experience but but talk about then his play and and uh, what he meant to the team there I'm beyond proud of Charles Elzey. And in the world of college basketball right now, uh, you know, there's a transfer epidemic and there's a tough times, you know, let me move on to the next school epidemic. And Charles Elzey is the epitome of showing what loyalty, what trust, what hard work can do for you. This guy came to us four years ago as an 18 year old freshman out of, you know, Tacoma, Washington, um, with a ton of talent. And, uh, and, a, and, you know, a real dog mentality, a real spirit about him that we fell in love with. And, you know, playing, playing in a championship program is not easy. It's really hard. Everybody sees the fun and the, the laughs and the, 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 tro the trophies and all that. But playing in the championship program, you've got to sacrifice a lot. And Charles Elsey sacrificed a ton for four years. But we knew at the end of the day that 
to win a national championship, you got to have some guys who can just jump up and score and, and, and you know, guard, make the big defensive play. And in that national tournament, Charles Elzey was, you know, uh, John Wooden used to say competitive spirit is be at your best when your best is needed. And Charles Elzey has competitive spirit. He was at his best. Um, and so I'm beyond proud of him, the way he played. And, you know, he's getting rewarded now. Tournament MVP, national champion. He's going to graduate with his degree here in a couple weeks. Um, it's a really cool story. I'm super proud of him and, and glad that he was part of our program here for the last four years. We're speaking now with Colby Blaine, the head men's basketball coach of the College of Idaho here on Midwest Sports Net. And I encourage you, please continue to enjoy the videos here. We enjoy talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Uh, coach also named the National Coach of the Year for the NAI. Congratulations on that honor. And another member of your roster in uh, Drew Wyman, a sophomore, uh, just received All-American honors from the NAIA as well. And talk about his play. Yeah, Drew Wyman special. He uh, was named the Montana State Gatorade Player of the Year just two years ago, um, which is a real testament to his overall talent. Um, but he's special in a lot of ways. You know, uh, athletically, Drew is, uh, I mean, he's only a sophomore right now. And as a freshman as well, you know, he's 6'5", 210 pounds of muscle. He's athletic. Um, he plays hard. You never have to get him to play harder than he's playing. Um, and he can score from all three levels. He really improved his, his uh, three-point percentage this year and his volume, which really made us hard to guard, especially early in the games. Um, so athletically, I mean, he's incredible. But there's something about Drew's mentality, about his spirit. Uh, you know, he's a no-nonsense guy. He's a get-the-job-done. And that's really resonated in our program over the last two years where people have seen, you know, the success that he's achieving with his mentality – and our guys are saying, I want that too. And they're, they're developing their mentality along with them. And so to me, that's leadership, you know? And so Drew is an incredible leader for us um, just by being the best version of himself. And so, uh, you know, he actually, to be honest, he had a pretty uh, uh, interesting tournament because he is the focus of a lot of the other opposing team scouts. And they were physical with him and, you know, uh, bodying him up, not letting him get many open shots but he impacts the game a lot more than just scoring. And, and you probably saw that throughout the tournament. Coach 36 and one now a fantastic season culminating again with that championship, but 36 consecutive wins. And that's a win streak that you'll take into next year. Lose the season opener. Don't lose again. I suppose that uh, that's how you want to draw it up, right? If you lose that season opener, just, just never win or never lose again. Just go yeah. through the rest of the season. You had a little bit of time. You're, you're still reflecting, I know, on, on the tournament and what happened in Kansas City. But the season as a whole, have you had a chance to look back and, and contemplate that a little bit? Yeah. That's, if I was smart, I'll write it down, right? I'll write a book and, uh, and make sure it's all on paper. I, I had the luxury in 2011 to work at a junior college, College of Southern Idaho, and we won the national championship there, too, and I was an assistant. And I haven't stopped thinking about that experience for the last 12 years. Um, and, and just kind of trying to figure out what was it about that team and how did it all go to, you know, together. And so I know for the next 12 to 22 to 32 years, I'm going to be thinking about this team as well. But, um, you know, the things that I can think of right away with these guys is one is they were physically strong. We crushed our conditioning tests at the beginning of the year. In fact, the, the guys tell a joke that that I was kind of upset that they did so well on it because then I couldn't hold them hostage to do an extra conditioning, you know. Um, but, uh, when we came in, the guys had done a great job in the summertime of preparing themselves physically. Well, then, you know, we know that to achieve our goals, it's all about who do we have to become? It's not about how are we going to win the national championship? It's about who do I have to become so that we can put ourselves in a position to do that. And, you know, I'll look back for years, the men that these guys became throughout the seven month journey that we were on. Is incredible like every single one of them had challenges every role is different the year is long the demands are hard we have a great academic situation here that makes it hard for you too and every one of them became literally the best version that they could become and the cool thing moving forward is that they're going to have to take another step if we want to compete again next year um but when i look at our immediate season i just think of well-conditioned uh, and physically strong, but I also think of guys and, and a team that decided, let's figure out who we have to become. And I think that's why we were able to finish those last two games. We could have given up, you know, two more points easily, but we just 
we were tough enough and and uh, together enough. We were not broken. Even when the, those runs were coming back, we were not a broken team. We just hadn't scored for a while. So right. that's what I think of this this group for sure. Well, Coach, so many players on this team. It's it's a young team. There's no question. It's a young team. And and um, three juniors, at least, <clears throat> how things are listed on the roster. I know with the COVID year, it's, it's all up for grabs for probably another two seasons as well. But three players listed as juniors, no players listed as seniors, eligibility-wise, on your roster. And I would have to think for the Cascade Conference and then for the NAI as a whole, they have to be thinking, my goodness, they have the potential to bring everybody back from a, a dominating performance this year. Uh, talk about having that opportunity then and, and coaching a team like that, knowing that they, they are going to know what's expected of them yet, next year. Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, it's exciting to know that we have the pieces that are good enough to compete for the biggest experiences, right? Like this year, part of our success is we had a chip on our shoulder every game because we you don't know what you don't know, and you don't know if you're quite good enough. And the way that our assistant coaches show us on film, our opponents, you would have thought we were playing, you know, the the Celtics and and the Magic. I mean, every team we played looked unbelievably good, which they were. But um, I think. What's exciting is that our guys do know now. They know they're good enough. They know they have the physical attributes, the talent. Um, and so I think that's really exciting coming back. We're going to bring a large roster back here. Um, and I think that's the challenge, though, too, is because we know, do we stay hungry? Do we, do we, you know, what do we have to do? Who do we have to become to take on that success? It'll change for us. But, it, you know, I, like I tell our guys in the recruiting process all the time, this is what you want in your life. This is what college is for. You are here to develop as a human being. And how many young men get an opportunity in their life to feel these experiences and then to and then to navigate them and you know as they move forward. We we have not arrived. We, we you know with the young roster they're they're coming back. We have not arrived. You got more to do in your career, you know. You're not graduating and moving on into the world yet. So I'm very excited about our roster will be very fun to see how we can uh, move guys forward and move their roles forward, allow them to explore the game a little bit more. Um, and, and, and we just, we know it'll be a fun challenge ahead of us, but we get to, I'll say this, I know I'm getting long winded at times, but I get to coach the best kids in America. And I mean that from the bottom of my soul, um, what, what those guys just accomplished was because they were willing to sacrifice and, and uh, bring positive energy and, and learn about themselves. And so, we're fired up to get to coach him again. Well, Coach, I want to let you know you can be long-winded on this channel whenever you want to. That's fine. And I, I appreciate what you brought to the table in, in getting to talk about the Yotes this year. National champions in 2023. And, and think about it for another 12 or 22 or however long it takes. Uh, soak this in. And congratulations to you and to the entire team. Coach Colby Blaine, College of Idaho, the national champions in the NEI this season. Thank you so much for taking time with us on the summit today. You bet. Thanks for having us. We appreciate everything you guys do to spread the good word about all the positive stuff going on in hoops. Thank you.